Robotic technology has been developed for many commercial applications, and one of those is in the use of wind power. As the offshore wind industry enters a rapid phase of growth, the challenges of keeping turbines spinning as efficiently as possible are growing too. At Bladebug, they're developing advanced robots to assist technicians in the inspection and repair of turbine blades. Chris Sheslak is the founder and director. Bladebug is a unique six-legged walking robot that's been designed to perform detailed inspections on wind turbine blades, but also to carry out repairs to the blades themselves. So currently, the only way to do this kind of activity is using rope access technicians who have to abseil down onto a blade. With the Bladebug robotic platform, we've enabled that work to be carried out remotely, safely and quickly using our robotic system. So our robot can now replicate the task that the human can do, but from uh, the safety of the base of the turbine, or actually as we see in the future, from a remote location, be it a control center onshore. We lift the robot up, we pull it onto the blade, and then once it's on the blade, we're able to walk around and get to any area that we would like to get to. This is uh, one of Bladebug's development prototype robots, affectionately known to us as Robot 11. What we've built is this six-legged robot where each leg has a vacuum cup to stick to the surface, a vacuum pump to generate the vacuum, but what's even cooler is the way that we're able to control tools. And what we're able to do is have very fine six degrees of freedom of control over that body in, in kind of a, a roll, uh, we can pitch it, uh, we can yaw it and turn it round. And that means that we've got the ability to do lots of really useful motions on the blade surface. So if we're doing a repair, we can move a sanding tool really accurately and precisely over that surface. And that can be done either via a person controlling the robot, or we can pre-program a path for it to follow. It can do it automatically. So it doesn't matter who's controlling the robot, you can press a button and it will follow that same uh, path that we've asked it to follow. Bladebug is controlled remotely via a, a robotics operator and we control it using uh, a games console joystick. So it's something which is very familiar to a lot of people and all you have to do is go forward, back, left and right as if you're, it's like a remote control car for example. And the, the robot is, is semi-autonomous, so the robot is able to scan the surface of the blade, calculate where to place its feet, but the operator just merely looks at the camera feed and moves the robot to where we want it to get to. What are the challenges of working in this industry? The biggest challenge that we had originally, or even now, is to make sure that the blade bug sticks to that blade surface. And so we've done, spent a lot of time working on the vacuum system of the robot, but also on how that robot walks, the way that the, the locomotion of the legs all work together to perform a really reliable and safe walking um, locomotion. It is extremely difficult to get six legs to walk and adapt to a change in surface of a blade, that is for sure. So there was a lot of initial research and we did look at um, inspiration from, from insects. There's over 2,000 parts within this system that needs to work together. So making sure that your electrical, um, mechanical and software systems are all working harmoniously is a big undertaking and that takes a lot of time in terms of initial design but also through thorough testing and development and verification that everything is working as intended. So in the future we foresee um, a higher level of autonomy within the sort of uh, robotics and automation of, of wind turbine maintenance and that is everything from uh, the boats that are going around these offshore wind farms to the to the aerial drones and to the blade bug robots where they're going to be working a lot more um, connected together and so making sure that the robot is designed to have uh, the reliability and robustness to work in these really challenging environments of, of say the North Sea hundreds of miles from the coast that's going to be a big challenge. So what skills and qualifications are important for young people to work in this area? Stacey Rivers is Bladebug's Business Development and Operations Manager. There are lots of different skills and there are lots of different roles um, across the company so everybody pitches in. So whether you're a software engineer, a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer, everybody has a role in every position. Um, for me, even though I work on the business and the operations side, I'm also heavily involved with the tool integration, the communications amongst the team and also some of the product development. So it's always, every day is an exciting day. 
So I didn't take a conventional route into uh, robotics. Um, I actually studied business and law, but I had a personal interest in engineering and technology. Um, and I used to build robots, mini robots in my spare time. I also actually taught myself to solder um, online and then bought myself a soldering kit, which I just did as a, as a enthusiast. Um, and ultimately it's, it's really paid out well. So at Bladebug, within my first three months, I built one of our first robots. If you're passionate about something, then absolutely you should pursue it because there are different career routes into robotics and engineering and technology. Um, and the, the, you can ultimately can steer your own course. I can see why wind turbines need a lot of uh, maintenance, testing and checking, but why use robots rather than people? Firstly, there's not enough people willing to do this really high risk, um, dangerous work. And secondly, with robots, you get lots of benefits about repeatability, consistency of the work that's being performed. So there's, there's an advantage over um, the human element. You're taking the variation from a human to human um, element out of the equation. And it's, uh, it's highly specialised work, but does it have wider applications once you've got robots that can go and repair wind turbines? Can you then use that technology to go and repair anything else that I can think of? Yes, so we've developed this multi-legged dexterous robot that's really good at walking over these really complex geometries of a wind turbine blade. And what that means is there's so many other industries where people are put in those positions, be it aviation, nuclear power stations, construction. So we see many applications where the robot that we've designed for a wind turbine blade can actually be transferred into lots of other industries and, and, and help solve, solve issues of inspections and repairs. And what are the uh, economic benefits to, to a company? Because I, I suppose the robots are that they're complex machines initially in terms of investment. So the robots, they are expensive bits of equipment, but what we are able to do with the robot is to take more preventative maintenance and early stage um, proactive repairs on blades. So what we're trying to do is, is change the, the landscape from reactive where blades often are damaged and you get um, aerodynamic inefficiencies where you can lose one to 2% of uh, performance, which doesn't sound much, but over a big offshore wind farm, that could be a loss of four and a half million pounds of, of revenue. I see. So it's a, it, part of the, the benefit is the robot can be there all the time. You don't need to just send it up when it has to go up. It can go up and inspect and it can inspect and it can do much more than a human can do. It can do much more. And as you say, it can do things in conditions beyond what a person can operate in. So you can work in, you know, the dark, you can work in the rain, you can work in a much wider um, given season, which means that you can just basically keep them on top of your blades in a much better um, fashion than you can currently do with the limited use of rope access technicians. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.